In this video, I'm going to show you how I transformed a Figma design into a website. I'll show you all of the HTML and CSS to build this from scratch, and how I added styling with before and after pseudo elements. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So to get started, I'm opening up the design file for the project that I'm currently working on. This is going to be a testimonials page for a website. At the top of the page, I have an H1 element that says testimonials, and then beneath that I have three cards. Each card contains a quote from a person, and then the person's name and the company they work for at the bottom. I am going to recreate this design using only HTML and CSS. So just looking at this design, I know I can make certain assumptions about how I'm going to develop it. I know that I'm going to include a container element that is going to hold the entire card, that I'm going to include an area to put the quote, and an area for the person's signature, which will include their name and the company they work for. I am going to label these design elements that I've added to the page as pseudo elements. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this element is going to take up an unknown number of lines. So this quote may be two lines, it may be four lines, it may be six lines. I don't know how long each quote will be. So I want this element to definitely be above the quote, and then I definitely want this other element to be beneath the quote. So I don't want to hard code where each quote will be because it has to flow naturally depending on the length of the quote. In this example, the quote is a little smaller, so this end quote is placed a bit higher than this end quote. And then I also want this dash before the person's name to behave in the same way. I always want it to be placed before the person's name, regardless of how long the person's name actually is. So in this example, this person's name is a bit longer than this person's name, but that dash is still right in front of it. So now taking all of this into consideration, I'm going to jump into CodePen and start creating this page. So right now in my CodePen, I only have the link to the font family that I'm going to use, and the rest of it is completely empty. So now I'm going to start to lay out the content in the body. So if we jump back to the design for a second, I want all these elements to flow in a particular way. So I'm going to include a main element that will hold all of these elements. So first there'll be a main tag. And then at the top of the page, I have an H1 element called testimonials. Then beneath that, I'm going to include a wrapper that will hold all of these cards and make them flow in a particular way. So beneath that, I'm going to place a div with a class of wrapper. So then all the cards will live in this wrapper. Next, I'm going to start to work on each individual card. So I'm going to create a div that will hold this whole container, and then I will create the different sections of content. So the quote will be one section, and then this part at the bottom will be another section. So first, I'm going to make a div with a class of testimonial container. So this will actually be this entire container. Next, I'm going to label this area right here. So I'm going to make it an H2 element and I'm going to give it a class of quote. And then beneath that, I want to include an area for the person's name and the company that they work for. Now, because I want this element to behave very differently than the quote, I am actually going to place it in its own container. So here I'm going to create a div with a class of signature. And I'll just make this a paragraph tag with a class of name. And I will also include another paragraph tag with a class of company. So the way that I'm laying the content out is that there is going to be this testimonials container that will hold everything this one area with a class of quote, and then this other area will behave very differently than the quote, so that is why I placed it in its own container. So now I'm actually going to fill this up with content so then we actually see something on the page. I'm just going to copy this quote and place it in my design. So now we actually see real content on the page. And now I'm going to apply some styling with CSS. 
So initially in the CSS, first I like to declare certain variables in the root, so I'm going to do that first. Next, I'm going to apply certain values globally, so I'm going to have the box sizing set to border box and a margin of padding set to zero. Next, I'm going to apply certain properties to the body tag. So for the body, I'm going to set it to the font that I want to use and then also set a particular background color. Next, I created this main element that essentially holds all the elements on the page. So the H1 and all of the cards. So I'm going to want to include a margin so there's a little bit of breathing room between the content and the edges of the page. Right now, as you can see, the text is completely flushed against the side of the page. So in that main tag, I'm just going to include a margin of 2 REM. Now there's a bit of breathing room. Next, we have this H1 element of testimonial, so I am just going to center align it. Next, I'm going to work on this div class of wrapper. So back in the design, you can see that we have three cards and I want them to flow naturally on the page. When this is in a desktop view, I want the three cards to be visible at one time. But when this is in a mobile view, I want all of these cards to go into one column. So I want to change the layout of the cards depending on the size of the screen. So the way that I'm going to do this is by using Flexbox. So this div class of wrapper will hold all of the cards. So I'm going to reference that in the HTML. And I'll just set this to a display of flex for right now. Because we only have one card on the page right now, we really won't see the difference when I add the other properties to this wrapper. So I'm just going to leave it as display of flex for now. So that way you will really see the effect of this code when we have the other cards added to this page. So next I'm going to work on the actual styling for this card. So I'm going to zoom in a bit more. So I have this card that has a little shadow around the outside of it, and then I'm going to style the inside. So first I'm going to reference this div class of testimonial container. And as I said earlier, there's a box shadow around the outside of it. So first I'm going to add a box shadow and I'm going to add certain properties to it. So now we can actually see the card on the page. In the design, I added a little bit of a border radius to the side, so I'm going to add that here. And there definitely needs to be some breathing room in the card. Obviously, this is how it looks with native HTML. So I am going to include some padding on the interior of 2REM. I'm also going to set the width of this element to 300 pixels. And then I'm going to set the position of this to relative. And it's because I'm going to want other elements inside this design to have other position properties. So I want it to be relative to the container that it's in. Next, I'm going to add properties for this quote. So beneath this, I'm going to reference that class of quote. I want to add some breathing room between the quote and the person's name. And I'm going to set a margin bottom to 4 REM, which will then push down the person's name. Next, I'm going to work on the before and after pseudo elements. So in the design, I have this open quote and then I have this close quote at the end. So the way that I'm going to add this to the page is with pseudo elements. So this will be a before pseudo element and this will be an after pseudo element. So in here, I'm going to reference that quote and then I'm going to add a before property and then an after property. Now, some qualities will be the same for the before and the after, so I'm going to include those properties here, but then I will break them out and have distinct properties for each element. So the first thing that they're both going to have in common is the color, which I'll set it to a primary color that I already defined. And then I'm actually going to want to get something on the page so we can actually see what we're doing. So I'm going to reference the before property, and I'm going to set the content of this to open quote. Once I do, I actually see an open quote on the page. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the after property, except set it to close quote. So now we have the before and the after element on the page. Now these are looking a little small, so I'm going to increase the size of both of them by writing font size, and I'll just set it to 80 pixels. So now these quotes are quite large on the page, which is what I want, but now it has disrupted the alignment. Going back to the design, I have this above the text and this beneath the text. So for here, I'm going to set the display property to block. 
This now makes them each go on their own line. The next thing I want to fix is the position of these elements. So I'm going to set the position to relative. The reason why I'm setting the position to relative is because I don't know exactly how long each quote will be. They could be various sizes. So I don't want to set it to absolute. I want these quotes to be placed depending on where they should be placed. Basically, relatively to where they should be placed on the page. So because I can't control the length of the quote, I'm going to set the position to relative and then move the beginning and the ending quote depending on how far I want it to be away from the quote. So if we just go back to the design for a second, it doesn't matter how long this quote is, I always want this to be placed a certain distance away from the ending line of the quote. So for the before property, I'm going to set the top to 0.5 REM. And I'm going to want to move this bottom quote as well. So I'm going to set the top of this to 1 REM, and then I'm going to set the left of it to 13 REM, which will then push it to the side of the page. Now, if you're wondering how I got these numbers, I had to do quite a bit of tweaking to get it to look how I wanted it to. So it just takes a little bit of trial and error. For this line height, I'm also going to set it to 2 REM for the quote. So that way the line height for the before and after doesn't affect the actual quote. That large space was happening because this text was one font size, but the quotes were a different font size. So I am just setting the line height to a particular value for the quote, so that way it fixed that alignment. Next, I'm going to work on this signature. So again, going back into the design, I have the person's name, the company, and this dash, which will be a before element. And I want this to be placed on the bottom area of the card, regardless of how long this quote actually is. So if we just zoom out a little bit, we can see that the length of the quote varies from person to person. But as you can see, each person's name is placed at the exact same spot on the card regardless of how long their quote actually is. So I know I have to set certain position properties for the person's name in order to achieve this look. So next, I'm going to recreate this with CSS. So I already have the person's name and the company, and I put that all in a class called Signature. I'm going to set the text align for this to right. And then I'm going to set the position of this to absolute. So I know it will definitely be on the bottom of the page. Then to fix the alignment, I'm just going to set the bottom to 1 REM and the right to 2 REM. So now it's placed exactly where we want to on the page. So again, I had to set it to position absolute. So that way, regardless of the size of the quote, the person's name will definitely be where I want it to be. Next, I'm going to add some styling for the person's name. So in here, I'm going to reference that class of name. And first, I want to bump up the font size a bit, so I'm going to make it font size and set it to 1.5 REM. Then I'm going to set the position of this element to relative. And it's because I'm going to want to apply that before property so I want this position to be relative. Next, I'm going to create this little dash that is going to be before the person's name. So in here, I'm going to reference that class of name and I'm going to create a before property. And for this before property, I'm going to set the content to an empty string just because it's going to be an empty div with no text in it. Then I'm going to set its particular width and height. I'm going to set the background color to that primary color that we have in the design. And then I'm going to set the display of it to inline block. So now we can actually see the dash on the page and it is right before the person's name. Now I'm going to set the position of this to relative as well. And I'm just going to fix the top and right alignment. Great, so now we have our very first testimonial on the page. And I'm going to duplicate this several times to include the other testimonials. And then I'm just going to go into my Figma and I'm going to copy these other quotes and then place them on the page. So now I've populated this testimonial page with other information. So I have three cards with different quotes in them and then also different people's names. Now we can see automatically there are some alignment issues with this. In the design, I had three cards that were all the same width. 
and I always want these elements to be center aligned on the page. So in that CSS, I have that wrapper of flex and that wrapper holds all of the cards. So I already have that display of flex, but it is ignoring that width of 300 pixels that I set for the container size. And it's because these cards are not wrapping onto the next line. So here I have to write flex wrap and then set it to wrap, which will then allow the card to flow on the next line if it needs to. Another thing that I'm noticing is that the cards are not aligned in the center. They are left aligned on the page. So here I'm going to write justify content and then set that to center. This then pushes the content into the center of the screen. So when there's enough room, then two cards go into the center. Next, these cards are a bit close to that header. So I'm going to set a margin top to one REM. So now there's a bit of breathing room there and each card is really close to the next one. So I have to add a little bit of margin between each card. So now there's a bit of space between each one. So now everything pops into place and it looks really good. So just to review what we did, I have this entire page in a main element. Then I included the H1 for the testimonials and then I created three cards. For each card, I put it in a container and it included the quote area and a signature area for the person's name and company. For the quote area, I included a before and after property to include a visual element. Now I set the position of these elements to relative because I don't know how long each quote will be. In this example, if I set the position of this to absolute, it would be on the same part of each card. I'll just demonstrate that. So if I set the position property to absolute, it will be on the same place on every single card. So I did not want to set it to absolute, but I wanted to set it to relative. So that way these quotes can be placed relatively to where they would normally be placed. So in this example, when the quote is four lines, this was placed right here. But when it was more than four lines, it was placed right here. Then I had to do a little bit of work to fix the alignment for the signature element. So again, in the HTML, I had that div class of signature, which included the person's name and the company. And I knew I wanted it to be at the bottom of the card, regardless of the length of the quote. So I had to set the position of this element to absolute. Then I was able to determine the bottom and right positioning. Then I created this before element. So I wanted this dashed line to definitely be before the person's name, regardless of how long the person's name actually is. So in that example, I also set this before element to position relative, and I just moved the top and right positioning. For this element, I set the display to inline block because I want it to be on the same line as the person's name. But for these quotes, I just set it to block because I wanted them to be on their own lines. So there you go. That's how I created this testimonial page using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.